We've got some intake manifold gaskets to put on this 1986 Jeep Comanche today. Ugh, there goes my day. I'll show you the right way to do it, or at least a right way to do it. Uh, and I'll show you what was done wrong that made them leak in the first place. So let's, I mean, we're already started. So you know, let's go farther. Like I said in the last episode, this is the GM 2.8 V6. This is a one year only on the Jeep Comanche. If you haven't seen the video on the introduction of this Comanche, go back and watch that when you have time. If you do, like, share, subscribe, all the fun stuff. It really helps the channel. Thank you very much. Now, this one had a massive vacuum leak when I bought it. The problem was not with the gasket itself. The problem was with the installation. This is the brand new intake manifold gasket set that I got. And you see how this kind of goes up three times, one for each set of push rods. And on the top side, it goes down three times, one for each set of push rods. Well, that's because the push rods have to go through the holes at an angle like this. It's a weird thing because it's a 60 degree V and it, it's a weird thing that the 60 degree V does. And very clearly, if you can read this, what does that say? What does it say? Do not cut. It says it on all of them. Look at that. One, two, and three. Mm. So that means they really want this to remain in one full piece. And here's the gasket I removed. Notice anything missing? Yes. The parts that say do not cut have been cut. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! And what does that do? It weakens this entire gasket. It rubbed up against push rods. This part pushed out of place. You can clearly see where it should be and where it actually was. There's only like eight bolts on this thing. There's really nothing to hold this in place if you cut the top off. Don't cut the tops off. Don't be lazy. Now, the reason they cut the tops off of this is, like I said, it has to go over top of the push rod here and underneath it up here, which means you've got to take these rocker arms loose. They didn't want to do that. I understand. It's a pain, but you have to. Otherwise, this happens and you do it all over again. Oh, do you want to do that? Now, there is a proper way to do this where you can bring it up on top dead center and, you know, you take the rock arms all the way off and then you lash the valves because it's hydraulic lifters when you put it back down, which means you do an EOIC and all those things that take time. Get over there! There's also a cheap way to do this, and that's what I have done. And I'm going to show you that method right now. Well, I, I already did it. I'll show you what I did. Really simple. Take my socket and my ratchet, and I put it on the first rocker arm. And I turn it a quarter of a turn at a time, just like that. And I count those turns until I can get that rocker arm off. And then to reinstall, what we're going to do is we're going to count the same number of turns, just like that. And it will be in the same place it was, which means it can't be any worse than it was when we took it apart. We'll see about that! Since I have a horrible memory, what I did is I write these down. So this is driver's side. Three turns, three turns, four turns, three turns, four turns, six turns. And this is passenger side. Five turns, three turns, three turns, three turns, five turns, three turns. So that's how I remember what I did. And because I have a horrible memory, I wrote it down. This is driver's side. Three turns, three turns, four turns, three turns, four turns, six turns. And this is passenger side. Five turns, three turns, three turns, three turns, five turns, three turns. It's easy as that. That way you can't forget it. You serious, Clark? You can turn that paper upside down, though, and forget which way it was, so you may want to mark that. And after you have all of your rocker arms and push rods separated, it's a pretty simple operation. This side up doesn't mean that this side is up vertically. It means that this side faces outward and away from the cylinder head. And you have to remember, when you took it off, which side had the restriction in the exhaust? On mine, it was the driver's side. So that's what we're gonna do. Over a couple of push rods. Over a couple more push rods. Just like that. And then there's two more on this side. Did you go over those two? You go over them just like that. You go, oh, look at that, over the push rods. And on these 2.8s, there's a stud on each end. So it is pretty easy to line up like that. Then what we can do is put all our push rods back into the push rod guide plates, just like they're supposed to be. We can slip our rocker arms back on top of the top of the push rods, like they're supposed to be.
and there you go. You don't have to cut them. They actually fit the way they're supposed to. Look at that. That's crazy talk. All I need to do is repeat this on this side. Then we'll worry about putting some gasket sealer on both sides of the water jackets. Uh, we'll put our big beads here, and we're going to drop that intake manifold back on. Okay, now that I've got everything snug down in the intake manifold, we're going to look up the proper torque spec, and we're going to do the X pattern from the center working our way out. Just boop, 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 boop. Or actually, boop, 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 boop. Like that. The X pattern, not X-Men. Uh, there's no Wolverine here. But we got to do that. you got to find the right torque spec because it's aluminum on aluminum. It has to be right, and you don't want to strip the threads. Okay, I just checked the manual on that, and for aluminum on aluminum, this intake manifold, it is 23 foot-pounds. Don't ever do it, maybe 25 tops, but that's it. So, 23 foot-pounds, 25, because it's going to be plus or minus. They're, they're not exact exact. That's all 25 foot-pounds and next we've got to do our rocker arms in reverse order of how we loosened them so I'm going to take my highly technical directions here and make sure that I've got the driver's side on the driver's side how do you read a blueprint uh-huh make sure everything is lined up quarter half three quarters one quarter half three quarters two quarter half three quarters three and there you go that one is uh as good as it was Now, before we go any farther on this, I'm going to give that RTV some time to set up. Uh, it's not that it's going to really get hurt if I put a carburetor and everything else on, but if there's any gas in the carburetor and that gets on the RTV, I, I don't want to mess with it, and I've got time. It's been a couple hours. Let's move on and finish up this thing and get it started. Let's finish this. And the next step for us is going to be putting this distributor back in. Now, if you had done this the right way, or at least the by-the-book way, you would now be putting this on top dead center and pointing this towards number one. But the way we did it, I know where the distributor was pointed when I took it out and we didn't roll the engine over at all. So we're going to put it right back in the way it came out, which is going to be pointing sort of back towards the passenger footwell. Also, we are going to put a new O-ring on this distributor because I don't know how old the old one was and it's just not worth it to not do that. It's a hell of an idea. Oh, there we go. Now we're sliding down. And make sure we're all the way down. Yep, we're flush. And there we go. We got plenty of room to adjust timing. Go vroom vroom. It's basically right where it was before. And the wires should look something like that when we're done. We'll worry about routing and everything else later. That goes to the air cleaner. Let's get that out of the way. All right, uh, valve covers or carburetor next? I'm gonna say valve covers just because it seems easier. clean these no if this thing runs right will I clean them yes last but not least 
the carburetor. Well, now we're finally getting somewhere, huh? And the carburetor on this thing is a piece of crap bear jet with a piece of crap base gasket. Have I mentioned that that's a piece of crap? Junk! However, it's a clean piece of crap that does seem to have everything working right. So, I guess there's that. Let's go, buddy. Ta-da! All right, that's everything. Now what we gotta do is clear all these tools off and try to start it. Sounds like the timing needs to be advanced. Something like that. And there we go. As you can see, this thing is running perfectly smooth. It's idling. It's idling a little high right now, but I haven't adjusted the carburetor yet. Uh, the timing is about 14 with the vacuum advance unplugged. And the only thing left is mixture screws and idle speed. And this thing's done. It's a 60,000 mile 2.8 liter V6. It's fine-ish. Good enough for me. One step closer to drivable. Next time, we're going to look at the brakes. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you like the Comanche. Hit the like button. Leave me a comment, even if it's emoji, smiley face, whatever their things are called, the picture things. And we'll see you next time.